Excellences and dear colleagues, at a time when youth and vulnerable people have suffered the most of the consequences of a long and tragic pandemic, it's crucial to give them voice and support in the effort to tackle the existential threat of climate change to restore hope towards the building of a better future. Climate change, clean energy transition and sustainable recovery are the strongest priorities of the Italian agenda in every multilateral forum we are part of. I want to thank our host, the President of the General Assembly, for, the, uh, for inviting us today. We're pursuing these priorities through the Presidents of the G20, which for the first time ever held a joint energy and climate ministerial meeting last July. We're pursuing them also in our role of partner of the incoming UK Presidencies of COP26 of the UNFCCC. Less than a month ago in Milan, as the Youth for Climate and at the pre-COP, we put youth and vulnerable people in the front seat of our path toward a greener and more just world. We did it together with the United Nations. Let me thank particularly Patricia Spinoza for her participation and incredible support in that occasion. We involved almost 400 young boys and girls and over the past months more than 500 events as part of All for Climate Italy 2021 program aiming to support all those citizens, associations and companies engaged in addressing climate change through concrete and effective actions. Together with our UK friends and 50 delegation at Milan's pre-COP, we addressed key issues such as adaptation, loss and damage, finance, transparency, ways to accelerate ambition and to keep 1.5 centigrade global warming alive. I was impressed by the discussions that took place and by the genuine willingness to find common grounds and solutions to those outstanding issues critical to achieve a successful outcome at COP26. Since science is clear, the IPCC report shows us that we can achieve it, but only if we were all working decisively in the same direction. Ambitious climate actions at all levels, national, regional, international, can avoid the most devastating effect of climate change, but only if all nations will act together. Similarly, the recent NDC synthesis report indicates that while there is a clear trend that greenhouse gas emissions are being reduced over time, nations must urgently double their climate efforts if they are to prevent global temperature increase beyond 1.5 centigrade by the end of the century. It is now time to deliver on our commitments. We need to spare no effort if we want to, li to live up to our responsibilities. We have run out of time. The world will be watching us, expecting each and every one of us to show leadership and ambition.